Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated, where today I'm joined by actor Stephen Roberts. So welcome, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah, this is, a, this is exciting for me. Thank you for doing this. Well, my pleasure. So I've, uh, I've been a fan of yours for a little while. I was a, I was a big uh, iZombie fan, so I saw you on there. And mm-hmm. I got to, uh, you know, the the kids were real big into uh, Once Upon a Time, so so we seen you on there, and okay. then of course um, you played the teacher in Tolly. Got to see you on I that. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like it, I, I always say the reason I have to podcast is because if I have a superpower, it's only that I'm filled with useless knowledge, so I can see somebody and I can tell you other things that they've been in. You know. Oh, nice. It, yeah, I could, it, it helps a little bit with podcasting. Otherwise, it's just it's just useless. <laughs> so, I, so Stephen, I, I usually start here. Tell me a little bit about you know what made you want to get into entertainment. How'd you go about that? Um, well, it's it's I've I've done like a, a couple podcasts recently. I've been been on a few and. And, yeah, uh, and I, it, it's been time for me. Like, you know, I've I've answered that question a couple times now, and and uh, it's an interesting question. You know, it's it's an interesting answer. I, I worked at at a homeless shelter for years. Like, yeah. I worked uh, as a support worker, as an advocate for the homeless. Um, and you know, one of the one of the jobs we had there was uh, you would you would take clients out, take them for a walk. You know, find out a bit about them, like what their stories are and whatnot. And uh, right. One guy, this one guy, he'd actually, you know, he was an actor. Uh, I can't mention his name, but he's been in a couple things and, and he's, you know, pretty down on his luck, this homeless man. And, and uh, so we were sitting in a park one day and he starts, um, starts doing a monologue. And I, I think it was Shakespeare or I know it was Shakespeare. I think it was uh, something from Hamlet or something. And he's yeah. just asked me, you ever, you ever read any of this? You, you want to give it a try? And and I did, and I butchered it. You know, I just butchered it. Like if you've never done, <laughs> shit, you know, your first crack at it. But he was, you know, it was it was really interesting. Um, he suggested that I I try it, and yeah. I don't I don't know why. But we kept talking and kept kind of like going for these walks and sitting in parks and and you know talking about things. And and he gave me a play, and it was called Waiting for Godot. It's one of uh, Samuel Beckett's great plays. And it's about yep. two guys hanging around waiting for God to show up. And ironically, uh, I was at a place in my life where, you know, I'd gone through the homeless thing, you know, and I, I'd been homeless. I grew up really rough. I'm, I'm very forward about this. I've written a memoir. So I'm yeah. like incredibly forward about my life. You can ask me, you, know, if you, eventually you do that, you have that experience, and you're like an open book, you know? Right. So, Right. Um, but we kept, we kept having having these visits. He gave me that play. I started to read that play, and there was something about what Samuel was writing about that I understood. Uh, and I felt like for me, I was at a point in my life where I was lacking real passion in my life, right. and that was kind of my existential crisis. I think at the time I was going through, I'd like had this job. It gave me a reason to, you know, helping people kind of gave me a reason to to help myself. Uh, and I still had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of, a lot of issues and whatnot. And, and, and what he gave me ironically was a gift that would change the course of my life. Um, and this, this was a homeless man as well. So it, for me, it was, it was, it's so ironic because I was hired to help this guy. Like I was hired right. to be the support for him and whatnot. And he, by gifting me with this play, uh, and by gifting me with this idea, uh, changed the direction of my life. And I, I and I, th- I look back and I think, you know, I was at a place in my life lacking that passion. I feel like I was kind of hanging around to mess up again. You know, I was just, I didn't have anything to work for every day. And acting was one of those things that just challenged every part of my being. Uh, it challenged like the psychology of like how I grew up and, and, you know, having something like confidence and being able to look at somebody in the eyes, you know, having uh, yeah. vul- vulnerability, connection, things like that, talking about feelings, uh, how does a character feel, you know, what, what is a character doing, you know, and, and I lived kind of an interesting life. So I observed a part, I think, of humanity that not a lot of people see and come back from. And, um, and so, it, it, yeah, it's, that's how I got into it. I mean, that's kind of that's the a long, great story. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So did, did you do 
anything artistic growing up or, or through school? Did you have any, you know, had you been exposed to it before? Um, I remember I had this, you know, I, I, I grew up in foster care. Like I grew up in and out of the system. Yeah. And like I said, I'm an open book. So, and a lot of these homes, they were, they were just not the best places to be to, to put it lightly, right. lightly. And, uh, I'm just going to get rid of this sound here. Just hang on a second. Boom. And silence. <laughs> uh okay so yeah and i you know i grew up a little rough like in those homes and and uh i was a huge fan of movies uh yeah. it didn't matter what it was uh when i put on a movie especially in the 90s they were doing so many so making so many interests interesting choices you know tarantino oh um, yeah and so like you know just amazing filmmakers then and and uh and wherever i was i would put on a film and it would just it would bring me to a place where I would witness the hero's journey and I would witness right. these heroes getting themselves in predicaments and learning uh, moral lessons and whatnot and, uh, and growing and transforming from that experience. And that's really what uh, I think I was actually in training for this long before I ever knew anything about it. Uh, and, you know, being, you know, you know, growing up with other folks and growing up in foster care, you're constantly looking at the normal kids and you're studying right. them and you're like, what do I have to do to fit in? what do I have to do to be normal? And, uh, and that, I think I was like learning about this way before I ever was sitting in yeah. the, of the home, you know, yeah, so. that's, I, that's so interesting. And, and I love the fact that, you know, once, uh, you had the opportunity, you kind of gave back and helped other people that were going through difficult times. I, I that's really, I mean, does, does Canada have, uh, a pretty large homeless problem similar to the U S well, right now, um, I mean, if you if you were to, it's I, I think it's I think it's different. Like I, I've traveled a little bit, yeah, and I think you know, there's you know, as someone who worked as an advocate on the east side, there's like a fentanyl epidemic, or there was for years before right. I kind of recently retired and moved into to film and stuff full time. So, um, you know, witnessing that, and then you know, going to Seattle, and there's a huge homeless population in Seattle and LA right. and and New York, like everywhere, it's it, it's everywhere. It's an epidemic itself, uh, and it's it's not talked about nearly enough. Um, and I, I and I feel here there's a lot of opportunity to get the help that you need. And yeah. I feel, you know, I, I feel that there are you know the welfare here helps you know getting funding to go to treatment centers and whatnot. And so it's it's one of those things where it's. Uh, you know, the people that I've witnessed in LA and in other places that were homeless, they're hungry. They're desperate. Yeah. The homelessness, what I've seen where I've worked and whatnot is like, they're also hungry and desperate, but there are cases where people have been enabled to the point where they just stop helping themselves. Right. And right. it's, you know, it's, and that's the thing is like with, with addiction, with uh, uh, depression, um, you know, it's, it's really difficult, I think, for people to take a step outside and see like, you know, I gotta, I gotta, like, I gotta get some help. And so if, you know, if you can like eat and sleep at a place like, you know, three, you know, uh, every single night, and then just go up and do your own thing, like do whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, a lot of people become enabled by that. So it's, it's kind of one of those things where yeah. it's uh, the homelessness I've seen elsewhere is that desperate, that hunger, that, you know, that poverty. Uh, here in Vancouver, at least, uh, I find that uh, it's complicated. It's and it's yeah. it's not the thing is is there's addiction, there's dual diagnosis, uh, and mental health. There's there's so many different aspects of homelessness um, that it's it, it's hard to know where to start. You know, it's hard to know where yeah. to start. You keep you know putting money in, into programs and whatnot that uh, that seem to be putting a you know a bandaid on a shotgun blast, or do you? um not do anything and see what happened i don't i i don't know the solution as i mean that was kind of one of the deciding factors in uh moving on and going the storytelling route full time uh was yeah. just you know it just you know spiraling well yeah that has to be frustrating to to deal with that because it's almost you know the efforts that are being put in to to help are almost um they're doing the they're they're helping in the wrong way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer would be there, but I, I would think that would be um, difficult, especially seeing it uh, 
you know, firsthand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I mean, there are, you know, also just to add to that, there are incredible recovery communities here, like yeah. nowhere else I've ever seen on the planet. Like you can, you can go to some of the areas here and you can hit a 12 step meeting. You can hit three by noon and, and oh, some wow. more after into the evening, right up, you know, right downtown here, there's like, they have AA and a like right till midnight. I'm not sure how that's been affected by the pandemic, but in, there's a rec an incredible recovery community here as well that I, I feel are, you know, I was kind of blessed at a young age to end up in one of those places. And I was with a bunch of grown men that were like, Hey, you better, uh, you know, think about changing your life, you know? And yeah. these were young, they were, they were, um, it, it, it was a youth program. It's called the Last Door Youth Program, uh, and I went through there, and it was uh, it was an incredible experience. You know, like it was. You know, you're up at the crack of dawn. You're making your bed. You're doing chores with the rest of the guys, and you're learning how to live as a productive member of society. Um, and yeah, just, it's great. Ending up in a place like that for me was uh, was an incredible experience. It it, it definitely uh, you know it it helped my position in life that I so, was so I, you, you mentioned you're writing a, a memoir is is this experience and that growing up is all of that in there yeah the the memoir itself uh it's like written on my wall here here i can show you if we go pan oh it's look at that point. but yeah it's all the way across <laughs> the that's like the you know so i can kind of yeah it's impressive it. yeah yeah so um it's basically about the first 17 years of my life it's um, yeah. it, it, about falling through the cracks of the foster care system and then uh, just clawing my way back and not my way back, but um, just fighting for survival, you know, just fighting yeah. for survival in the foster care system that just lost track of me. You know, one of the things I did was I got my file uh, going through Freedom of Information and I got a 795 page file. And in that oh, file, cow. you could see every home, every foster home that I was in. And you could see these little blurps where basically the ministry, the ministry lost track of me for years. Uh, and there were plenty of mistakes and whatnot. And so I, I'm not like, you know, but luckily I ended up in a place that cared. I ended up with people right. that are basically modern day superheroes and they're, you know, helping youngsters, helping people get their life together. So um, it, it's more of, I think, a solution uh, focus story. Uh, and, uh, well, it's kind of inspirational it. too. You've got, I mean, well, because you made it out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's ironic that, uh, you know, I, I, that's the thing is I'm, I'm so grateful. I did like, I'm so right. that, that's the, even through this time of writing this, it's not, it's not easy. You know, it's not, it's not easy to write something like that and, and to put myself back in some of those positions. But, it, you know, if the pandemic, if lockdown has taught me anything, it's that uh, it's not all about me anymore. Yeah, it's that's right. That's right. I have similar stories. And, uh, and, and, and I think it's just by, by sharing stories and really connecting with people that we, we, I think will, will, will grow. You know? Yeah, agree, agreed. So did you start writing during the pandemic? I did. It's, you know, I'm one of those people, I always got to be doing something like I always, yeah. I have like a ton of energy um, and uh, lockdown happened. And I was like, you know, I've been meaning to, to sit down and write. And that's what I did. I just took, you know, I wrote, I wrote a first draft in a few months and then I realized like how much it takes to actually write, write a book. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's not and, easy. Uh, oh, no, not at all. And my, uh, you know, uh, my fiance, Veronica, she is, been just instrumental like just um she's an incredible writer herself and and yeah. her influence on me is uh you know it's it, it's been trial and error trial and error yeah. it, it's like anything you've ever learned like um you know i'm it uh, it's just it's just pure passion i think and uh and will you know just yeah. will to get it done you know i one of the things that kind of kept me out of trouble for a while was like mma and boxing and stuff like that and right and uh, I love that work ethic. I train that way constantly. I'm like up like first thing in the morning, I write for like five, six hours and then it's right to the gym. I like skip for an hour. I do weights for an hour and I just stay oh, focused. And it's like, I just like want to like bring that work ethic too. What'd you do during the uh, pandemic when you're in the lockdown? Cause that's where, you know, know most of us put on the weight. <laughs> A whole, a whole lot of yoga. I did, there you go. man, 
Yeah, it's funny because my girlfriend was like, don't wear that sweater. You're going to start sweating. Like, you, <laughs> you should listen to her. She knows. Yeah, she knew. So uh, I did a ton of yoga in the beginning, a ton of yoga. And it, like I said, I started writing uh, meditation. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, just I did a lot of that. And uh, and I think somewhere during the course of like writing and yoga and meditation, I just started to like appreciate a lot of things that I don't think I did before. Like the right. like little things in life, like having a roof over my head. You know, that's that's yeah. a big deal. And for someone that's been homeless, I in an odd way, I think I was taking it for granted in a way. And and just being grateful for those little things, like those, you know, having having food in the fridge, having uh, you know, I'm gonna be okay. There's a lot of people in the pandemic. This was not an easy experience for that's them. Right. I, I ended up in a place I was lucky, you know, I was, yeah. I was lucky. I think a lot of people had it really tough. And for me, honestly, I did a complete inventory of my life and I was like, um, there are some things I want to do differently. And there are some things I'm going to focus on one being the book, other projects. And what do I really want to do with acting? You know, like, right. what do I, like, what is it? Because I, I think for a long time, I've been unspecific about it. And I think a lot of these in, independent projects I've done, they're a training ground. They've been a training ground for, um, for where I want to go and what I want to do. Um, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the awards. I'm grateful for, um, you know, you saying, Oh, my kids loved once upon a time. I was like, great. I was a part of that show. I love that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a great feeling, you know, same with my nieces and stuff. They like really like the show as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it helped me focus. I don't know how you found it, but I was like, there's so much, there's, it helped me like really just get organized with everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's great started. that you use the time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I always say it's, it's one of those things that chances are we're never going to go through something like this again. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it hasn't happened in like a hundred years. So, chances are, you know, if we waste that time, we're not going to get it back. So, I mean, that's great that you actually made such good use of it. You know, that's, that's really good. So what's the name of the book? It's called uh, The Extraordinary Tales of Surviving Boyhood. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have a uh, do you have a uh, release date yet? No. Nyada. I'm I'm holding off as long as I can. It's yeah. funny because when I first started writing the book, I was like, I'm just gonna get this out there. I'm just gonna like and then I and then you know I got some feedback on the book, like, hey Steve, you might want to take some time and like do another 10 drafts. And then I decided to do just that. And so I'm like, I think I'm on draft seven now or oh wow. Yeah, just finishing seven. And I'm probably gonna do another couple before I, you know, that's the thing is like writing is, it's a technique. It's just like acting, yeah. you know, the first time you go to do it, it's not going to, you know, chances are, you're not going to be Shakespeare right off the top. Right. <laughs> you, have to, you have to build that craft. Right. So I, I, that's what I do is I just put the hours in every day. You know, yeah. That's impressive. That's philosophy. impressive. Yeah. So when you, when you decided, you know, after you, you uh, uh, decided that you wanted to get into acting, how did you go about that? What did, what did you do? Um, I, you know, I became friends, uh, with this homeless guy. Eventually he ended up moving out of the shelter and, and he got a place. Um, and he was like, you know, I know somebody who has a class. Yeah. And, and so I ended up like going to this class and to be honest, it, it wasn't the class for me. I was, you know, I was a different guy. I wasn't, I wasn't vulnerable, like I said. And, yeah. and I don't, I don't know if I was ready, uh, but I ended up doing this class, um, and, I, and, and there were instances, you know, along the journey that like, wow, this is really what I want to do. You know, right. like this, this, might, like this might be it. And there was one instance actually that like really, um, you know, I, I think had a major influence. Uh, yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, and I, I've said this bef uh, before a couple of times now, but I was, I was at this 12 step meeting um, and, and, I'll say this, why this individual might have been at a 12 step meeting was his business. That has, sure. I have no, it could be like to support a relative. It could be, you know, I, that's none of my business, but I was there to support my sister. Um, and she's someone who's, she struggled quite a bit. Same, same background, same, same thing. Yeah. And so I kind of recently, I'd like gotten my life together and, 
and I was like working in the shelter doing pretty good and and uh, and then it kind of leaked you know to the relatives like you know I'm gonna become an actor and and when you come from where I come from it's the weirdest thing it's like people support it like yeah you know I think that's a good that's idea cool. maybe don't be an MMA fighter go be an actor. <laughs> Well, they're so, looking uh, out for your safety. Uh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So it was, uh, I remember showing up to this meeting. Uh, it was a candlelit meeting. So it's like dark and, yeah. and you go in, we're all kind of reading and, you know, there's candles so you can kind of see people's faces just, just enough. And, and so I can see my sister, I like sit down in the meeting and I see my sister and she's like chairing the meeting. She like starts waving at me. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, yeah. And she starts pointing beside me. And I'm like, what? Like, I kind of look around at first. And I'm like, she's no, like, right, right beside you. And I like look right beside me, and it's Robin Williams. No way. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man. And I just, you know, I do what I do when I get nervous. I just start sweating. <laughs> and, like, and so they had this. They have like this hot halftime, right? You could like go out and uh, and you can uh, have cigarettes and stuff. They'll like yeah. smoke halftime, you know, and. And so we're out there. And so my sister, you know, and you got to understand too, is my sister, she came, you know, from a rough place and, and uh, you know, it, it, you know, physically it, it, you know, you can see it. And, and so my sister is so excited. She runs up to Robin and she's like, I'm your, or she's like, you're my biggest fan. And Robin's like, I am your biggest fan. And then he like, gives up. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I remember, I remember that was like the first, I just thought that was so, my sister means a lot to me. So that was just something yeah. right there. I was like, that is just such a cool thing to do there. And uh, so then, oh, I got to introduce you. I got to introduce you to my brother. He's an actor. And I'm like, and you got like first week in acting her. class. Yeah, yeah. First week in acting class. Um, and ironically, uh, I'm working on a Goodwill hunting scene. Um, that's Yeah, that's, that's meant to be. Yeah, that's meant to be. So I'm like, um so she comes over and introduces me and then and then we end up going back inside we finished the meeting and then after the meeting we chatted again and then we went to just like Maine and 12th like which is in Vancouver here and yeah and to this coffee shop and and kind of like we the group was kind of socializing and and he just kind of turns to me and he's like well what are you what are you working on and I'm like oh god and I just like and I like pull it out of my book bag I'm like I just give it to him and he takes it and he's like, yeah, I think, uh, I think I know the scene. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, man. Um, he's like, well, you want to go work on it? Oh and I'm gosh. like, how could you yeah, say no? Well, I would be an idiot if I said no. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. So we went to this like other little, it was about a block away from everyone or so. And, and there's, there's a park there. Apparently, I have like really good luck in parks. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two parts. I just like piece that together. Wow. So, anyways, we're in the we're in the park, and and I was closed off. I was like, you know, an aggressive little brat, and uh, and but there was something about him. There was something about him. Uh, his softness, his uh, his play, like yeah. just his play side, just his just have fun just have fun and he would you know i'd kind of clam up and, and be like this like yeah like doing this thing like this he'd be like no just loosen up just like take a breath have fun <laughs> and and he kept saying this thing to me as we're as he's coaching me and, and he spent like probably it was like an hour and a half two hours or so uh when you're acting time flies and stuff uh and so like i, I can't i can't really remember exactly how long it was but he spent quite a chunk of time with me and and he kept saying you know you're meant for this you're meant for this and and after, and after he coached me, uh, he told me I should take this seriously. Yeah. And, and the weird, the, the thing is, is this just came up and I didn't, I didn't get to like finish a thought I had on a podcast like a few days ago, but this just, this just came up. But like, even, even if I hadn't booked anything, like even, even if like, um, I just went to classes for the rest of my life. Right. The direction that that sent me in the um, perspective that it gave me on people, the empathy that I found um, as an actor is completely worth it. Is It doesn't, wow. you know, you can't, that's the thing is like him being someone not knowing me at all, taking that time, that to me, I look at that and I'm like, that's real greatness. Like yeah. that is like, 
a person that could be doing anything at any point in time, anything he wants to do, anything. He's got all the money, you know, and he can do anything. And he's sitting there in a park with a defensive little brat uh, who just might be an actor, you know, and, yeah. and he's spending time with me and, and going through stuff with me. But I've always, I've always kind of gone back and anytime this industry, and it's a, it's a, you know, I'll tell you as somebody who got into this at like 26, 27, it's not easy to get your foot in the door. That's you right. Know, it's not, it's not easy to, there's so much rejection. I go through like more rejection <laughs> last week than like most, like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to judge most people, but like a lot of people go through and, and, uh, and every, every time I just go back to like, you're meant for this, you're meant for this, you're meant for this. So every time someone's like, you're too intense tense you know you're too you're too short too tall too fat too whatever not pretty enough like um i just go back to this thing and it's like well robin told me that i was meant for this you know so, that's right that's right he knows a little bit yeah exactly he knows a little bit so whoever the fuck you think you are i don't really care <laughs> you know, I don't, you know and, and that's the thing too, right? Is you know, and there's been there's been times like where I, I I've met other great people, amazing yeah. people in the industry who are egoless, who are truly their most their biggest concern is telling a good story, you know, and yeah. and when you're around great people, that that lack of uh that lack of ego is amazing. You know, when you're kind of that play in that place that's like hot right, right you know, you're caught kind of right in between. That's yeah. a tricky place. So you gotta like navigate a lot. But when you're like, you know, with a guy like Jason Reitman, like working with him or like, um, you know, Charlie Stern or like anyone like that, it's when you're around like real greatness, there is such a such a spirit of collabor uh, collaboration, you know, like it's just collaboration and it's easy. It just makes my job easy. So, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's amazing. I've, I've been lucky enough to talk to a few actors that have uh, got to work um, with Robin and and they they all had you know, you know, stories where he has went out of his way to give some of his time when he wouldn't, he didn't have to do that. You know, and I, no. I, I, I think especially looking back, you know, now that we know, you know, that he, he was, he was struggling with some stuff himself, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when you look at that now and, and think he's dealing with things on it himself, but he still took time to, to help other actors. I just, I just, what, what an amazing person i i'm so happy that you got that experience because that's like you said even if you never did anything uh other than just continue to take classes it's mm. still life-changing absolutely you know yeah the you know i'm i mean if i and i look at it like if i had i think if i hadn't have had that experience i think and i do and i said this before like I, I think i was i was just hanging around until i did something stupid Right. You know, I was at that right. in my life. Right. My life was going to go one of two ways, and it and it was like, you know, meeting that that homeless man in the park, you know, and then meeting Robin weeks after. Yeah. Uh, um, that just completely. It. What I I totally agree that you said that's now that's meant to be. Now yeah. That's meant, it's to, meant be. to be. And it was enough, like you know, it was enough to be to go back to school, uh, to get an education to. Um, to pursue acting classes, to take like two or three classes at once, to uh, yeah. just push myself in, in every in every way I could possibly. Man, that's push just myself. amazing. And it can do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good for you. So, 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 tell me a little bit about. I got to ask about uh, your experience on Tolly. Um, you know, how did that role come about, and what was that kind of uh, kind of like? Because you had a decent role on there. Mm -hmm. It was easy. It was well. Uh, I like I didn't want to go to the audition to be honest. I didn't. Yeah. I did not want to go to the audition. I I play like if you look at some of the leads, <laughs> um, I've had I play bad dudes. Like I play, yeah. you know, um, and who find some kind of redemption. But that was an audition that I was scared to go to. My agent called me and was like, "You're going to be in a room with Jason Reitman." And then I read the part and I was like, "This is not the part for me. If I go into that room, I'm going to embarrass myself." Yeah, and she scary. was like. And I even call, I had, it was like one of those phone calls you have with an agent and you almost <laughs> sound crazy. and it's like, no, I don't care. I, I don't know, Jason, I, this is not the part. I'm not going in this room. And, uh, and she's like, I don't care. You can turn down anything else, but when you have a chance to be in a room with Jason Reitman, like you go to that audition. That's right. And That's right. I was like, 
Okay. Good for so her. I ended up, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was like, it was a good call on her part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but I ended up going and I was like sweating because that's what I do when I'm nervous. <laughs> Me too. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I'm like sweating. I'm in the waiting room. And then I just, you know, I was talking about this before, but when you think about, you know, where, when I think about where I come from, you know, what it took to survive, uh, you know, being on the street with no food, nobody looking out for me and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I'm sitting in a waiting room, waiting to walk into a room with Ivan Reitman's son, Ivan Reitman, who directed Ghostbusters. <laughs> and I'm like, this is cool, but like, what do I have to be afraid of? Like what? Right. And, and that's the thing. It's like, it's the same thing. Like if you've ever fought, it's like you've, you you know, your first fight, it's like you train, you train, you train, and you're so scared, like right up into yeah. the building, you know, and then you're just in it. You're just in right. it. It's, right. it's, it's, it's in your control whether or not you're going to win or lose. So when I walked in the room, all that anxiety, all that sweatiness, feeling unworthy, whatever, it just went away. And it was like, this is the guy at the top of the game who like is just looking for to hire somebody for a job, you know? Yeah. So I just, and, and I knew what the character was doing. So I just did that. He readjusted me a couple times. Um, and then, and then I think by the time I got home, after that i mean it was kind of, it's kind of a blur in the room because it's almost like a fight because you're like yeah you know, do the best performance you can in front of <laughs> also like listen to his notes and then i got a casting director staring at me as well and and uh but by the time i got home like an hour hour and a half later or whatever i'd been shortlisted for the role yeah, and i amazing. was like wow and it was you know it was a, playing a teacher who um is working with a child who has behavior behavioral issues and it's just yeah. a very very simple scene but it's one of those scenes where you know um i i think it was a it, it was a solid story point in in the film it was yeah agree it had to be hit in a certain way and and i just it was like right place right time um and just you know just going for it so yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think it worked out pretty good, and my agent just busted my balls forever after that. Like, <laughs> and she should. She just, hey, like anytime I would like not want to do an audition, she'd be like, "Hey, remember that time that you didn't want to go to that Jason Reitman audition, and then you went and then you booked it? Shut up and go!" Like she would. Just, yeah, that's right. Get your butt there. And, hey, yeah. So. Well, you were amazing in it. It was well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I always, I always, when when I'm getting ready to interview somebody, I I take uh, I take a picture and show the kids. I'm like, what have you seen them in? So every one of them is like black tooth. Black oh, tooth. really? Yeah. yeah. They knew you right off. I was like, okay. Oh, I was like, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, so I watched the uh, trailer for river road and you're, you're pretty scary in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it, it looks awesome. And it, that, um, you know, tell me a little bit about that movie and when is it being released? Cause the trailer was great. It's, um, it is, um, being released. It is, I have dates here. Hang on a second. Um, there is, um, no, Oh, there it is. There it is. One second. There's, it is being released in Canada in LA. Um, and it, it hang on. It's taking forever. Um, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so October 1st through October 7th in Los, Ange Los Angeles at the uh, Lumiere Cinema at the Music Hall. Uh, October nice. 1st, uh, Cincinnati, um, Ohio, Woodward Theater, October 3rd in Portland also on at uh, Clinton Street Theater. And October 16th, Victoria, BC, October 19th, Vancouver, BC at Cinematheque. So or cinematic that's what that theater's called so it's it's gonna be uh and then there's more i think there'll be like more and more dates going up there for, yeah um but yeah it'll it, it's yeah so what was the other question i feel like you asked me well so about. yeah so so you play uh fresno who's a, a drug dealer and it looked like you just got to completely cut loose with the role but tell me a little bit about the role you know what uh, what's the movie about you know what's your role in it yeah, it's about um, it's it's about a young couple who go on a terror 
um, they get uh, hooked on dope and then they, they go on a um, kind of a kamikaze mission yeah. to destroy themselves. <laughs> And then they meet me and Fresno is a, uh, he's a, he's a drug dealer with certain ethics. Like he doesn't uh, cut his dope with fentanyl. And that's, that's what was okay. interesting to me at the time with the script. Cause I was like, Oh, this is a weird character. This is like, uh, yeah. he's got these little ethics. And, and, uh, and I remembered, um, I remember uh, I've always been a fan of Gary Oldman. Like he's kind of like, Oh the, yeah, me too. He's like the acting God. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's so good so good and uh and i remember he did this role where he played this guy drexel in true romance have you seen that yep i've seen that it's a great movie yeah yeah absolutely and i remember his performance in that and i was like reading the script and i was like man he has like a little a little streak of drexel and then he reminded me of some other characters and i was just his kind of cadence and the way he spoke and whatnot yeah um, and he had like it was kind of written in this weird you know, broken English with this, uh, almost like, uh, like this slang to it, like this, uh, yeah, this like weird kind of draw. And I was like, I like this. I don't know what it is, but I like it. And it, you know, that, <laughs> that was, and this has happened to me a few times, you know, a lot of the like bigger leads and stuff I've booked over the last couple of years. Um, you know, it, it's not through like a typical auditioning process. Right. Like I'll have a friend call me and be like, hey, I've been cast in something and there's this character and I really want you to meet the director. Um, or like, there's like, you know, or I get a call and and they'll like, you know, be like, oh, like how how fast can you get here to like read for this project? And it's just like, <laughs> like knowing people and networking and stuff too. And, yeah. and it always, it's come down recently the last three times in a row where it's like, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta have a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I tend to be that guy, I guess, where they're like, you know, I want someone really intense. And, and a couple of times now in a couple of these indie films are like, I want someone that is like, just going to like, go for it, just going to yeah. like, bring everything he's got. And, and I, I know, like, when I when I approach um, a role, one thing I, I do, I am still learning constantly, like, I'm, I'm still I'm not a master by any means, but I, I throw everything I have at it. Like, I just I don't. Yeah not somebody you know a lot of there's actors that are really good at like they just become the world like they can like you can yeah. get bit part of something um you know some actors you look up they're like yeah that guy's been like 150 things you know i don't recognize his face i don't recognize him at yeah. all but like that guy's done that many parts i don't really believe i'm ever going to be that actor nor right. do, does it look to me like i like playing leads i like playing like big meaty roles telling a story that's why i got into this and it's you know uh, it's, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had to like play characters like that, to have characters yeah. like that. I'm yeah. Like, that's awesome. And, well, you yeah, can tell so from the trailer like, that, that, I mean, you, you know, he, just the little bit that you're in the trailer, you can tell that's a character that you want to watch on screen. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? I mean, it's, it's really well done and you can tell he's kind of out, you know, it's like he's, he's holding it together, but barely. Mm -hmm. Cool. I it's, like that. that. That's the way I would explain him. For sure. Um, but yeah, my friend Cam, it was my friend Cam. Uh, he's doing some cool stuff right now, but he, he called me up and was like, I need you to come like do this read. Um, I think you're like perfect for this. And so we went actually to his house and yeah. it was like sitting there with the director. And I was just like, you know what, man, I've been, oh, okay. I went over this, like, let's, and I just had this idea in my head of this guy. And I just, so I like <laughs> kind of, I, I think I ripped off my shirt at one point. And I was like screaming and then I like went and I think I grabbed the freezy from the freezer and I stuck it in my mouth and I was kind of doing his draw and stuff and, and just like, walk, like just doing ever, anything, just exploring. Right. Like yeah. that's, you know, it was nice just to be in a different environment. And, and, uh, and by the time I left, Rob was just like, yeah, we, we definitely want you as this character. Uh, that's that's awesome. the now. And then he, he kind of kept adding things to the, to the movie too. He kind of kept adding like, Oh, what if he does this? What if we get you like walking here and, could you come up with something yeah. interesting there? And now it's 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 weird too because that's happened to me a couple times where it's like you know once someone kind of like takes a shot and is like oh let's see if this guy's can do it, um, I kind of tend up and to be in like I end up in more scenes like more and more yeah. scenes. It's just weird. It's a weird kind of thing that keeps happening. And now Rob is writing uh, a spinoff story about Fresno the character alone as the lead of the film. Ooh. Yeah, so that's like that's going, pretty awesome. Like, 
and we had a conversation i was like man i don't think i'm done with that character he's like i don't think you are too he's like well what do you want to do and i'm like well let's figure it out and he's yeah. so he's like full on writing it you know it's an early is it stages. a prequel or is it going to be like a sequel it's it's I don't I don't think it would be like a sequel, but it's this character and what his life might look like, yeah. and what his journey of self discovery might entail. So that's um, awesome. So we've been like shooting around ideas. He's he's like gung ho. He's also I have to say as a young director, Rob Wiley is uh, the funnest, the <laughs> most fun, and uh, and he's a director that always wants more, whatever you're doing, whatever you throw at him, you can throw the kitchen sink at him. And like, he just right. wants more. He's just like, go for it. You know, uh, I, th I would and, think and, I, not that I'm an actor, but I would think as an actor, that's exactly what you want. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that's, you know, in some, a lot of TV and stuff, you don't always have that luxury, right? You got to like show up, hit your mark, say your line. Like that's right. But in, that's right. in film land, I love cinema. I love independent films. I love doing movies, man. It's, you know, it's all those, you know, it's, you know, I'm that foster kid that was sitting down and watching movies and they just were such a gift to me. That's what I want to do. Yeah. You know now you're I mean? in them. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, exactly. Now I'm, I'm in them. I'm like, you know, doing the deal and, and learning lots, like learning lots constantly and, and, uh, and learning what shows up on screen too. You know, sometimes you make the craziest yeah. choices and none of that ends up on screen and you're like, well, well, <laughs> yeah. well that's what they have, you know, the extended cut and, Mm -hmm. you know, extra scenes and that type of thing. You got to get that out there at some point. Yeah. I'm excited just, uh, for it. I'm, I'm hoping that we're out in LA uh, around the time it's released. And if, if not, I mean, Cincinnati's right in my neck of the woods. So nice. we can yeah. uh, check it out then. Cause it, it looks like a really, really good movie. Cool. Do you, uh, um, does he, does he have a soft side? I think, does he have a soft side? Not in this one. Yeah. I think right to the bitter end, he's just a loose cannon. Like right, he's yeah. got he's got a you he's you know that dog with rabies. <laughs> I mean, uh, that had to be a blast to play. Yeah, absolutely. He's just like there's just no no way around it. He's got to be put down in his spinoff story. Like in the spinoff we're doing, uh, I would say it's a redemption story, and I would definitely say that there there is a much softer side. Yeah, that's uh, cool. You're going to come out. Absolutely. So, which, I mean, that's usually what, you know, draws me to certain characters too, is that um, it's all like, I like playing like intense characters, but there's got to yeah. be some kind of humility and change to that. That's right. Know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have some layers. Mm -hmm. totally. totally. Yeah. So is there a genre that you haven't done that you would like to do? Um, More comedy. I would love to do, I would like to yeah. love... It's so it's so strange, but you know, during the pandemic, I watched every episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine like ten times over. Yeah, and yeah, I'm watching the new season now. Oh, so good, so good. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen the new season, so I'm. It's good. I'm, it's good. Yeah, deadly, deadly. Yeah. Um, I love I love comedy. Same with The Office. Like, I have um. Hang on a second. This is like my Dwight bobblehead. This is. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So like when I'm feeling down, you just. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I've um, got in, in the other room. I've got my uh, fake Dundee. Oh, do you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that'd be awesome. Dundee trophy. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that comedy would be uh, would be really good. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty good. And you prefer movies over TV, but I'm assuming either either one if the right role comes along. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the TV that you watch now, you know, it's yeah. some are just, uh, I'm in love with these BBC series. Like I watch like all the, I'm, I'm a story, a structure nut. So yeah. Yeah. I watch, uh, I watch like line of duty and all those. Oh my know. gosh. Line of duty. I haven't seen the new season yet, but that's one of my favorite shows. Love that so show. Sad, man. Yeah. Unreal. I, I tell everybody cause it's, you know, here it's kind of uh, under the radar. People don't really know about it. I keep telling them mm -hmm. about it. No yeah, because it's kind of short seasons, but uh, it's so good. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to Stephen watch Graham, the new one. Stephen Graham's in the new season. Really? Stephen, Stephen Graham is like one of my favorite, my all-time favorite. Yeah, guys. he's great. Intensity. He's amazing. And uh, he's in it. It's unreal. Like I was I was just, I bite my nails. and Yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Um, I, I just got to find a day where I can just binge the whole, the whole season. Totally. 
totally. Yeah, that's 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 terrific. So this has been great, Stephen. Thank you so much. This is a. Uh, I think you're such a you're such you've got such a good story. I mean, you they could make a movie just about your life. Maybe they will after you get the book out there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't. I'd watch that. that. Go see. That'd be like the weirdest movie. Go see if you if somebody made a movie about your life and you're watching it up on screen. You're like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's a good idea. Would you um, would you ever be interested in? like uh being behind the camera like directing anything like that um i mean i i am i write a lot and i've got yes. a couple of scripts uh i have a, i'm entertaining the idea more now, now than i think ever before um yeah. and i and i think you know a lot of the things i would write about uh would have to do um with things like addiction um right and, and things that, things that I've been kind of personally moved by, you know, um, yeah. and, and, but on a level where it's not a soft story, it's right. about, it's about hope and inspiration. And, and I think that's what drives, you know, e even, you know, um, any, anything I watch, anything I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not one for the melodrama. I'm not one right. for that. And I feel like, you know, addiction and alcoholism has been addressed in so many different ways. But I'll tell you what, when I wasn't a youth correctional or when I wasn't a youth um, recovery house, uh, I had some of the best times of my life in that place. So much so that it changed my entire life and it, it saved me. It saved me. Connecting with yeah. other guys my age talking about things like feelings, talking about things that, that I I mean, that would be a good show. Absolutely. And, uh, and then on top of that, you know, then going cliff diving, then trying dirt biking, oh my like gosh. trying MMA, you know, try, you know, and being kind of influenced around like, you know, older males who really take it upon themselves yeah. to, uh, to lift you up and teach you about things, you know, that, you know, if you, you know, I, I read quite a bit and, and the reason I love the hero's journey, um, is just the, the learning lesson, you know, and, one of the, yeah. one of the top one of the themes I would be most interested in writing about I think is the lack of fatherhood these days yeah. and that lack of I'm not talking about I'm talking about the fatherhood that's like hey you know you you're getting hired at a job let me show you how to become a carpenter you know what I mean right or, hey you're trying to life together let me show you how to just get through this week sober you know like yeah. things like things like that where it's like you know men kind of help other men with you know without an expectation other than our purpose is really to set up the next generation. I love that. That's, that's yeah, terrific. So I kind of went on a bit of a tangent. It was a, yeah, you need to write about that, though. That needs to be a series. <laughs> it's, I, I, you know what? I do. I have one one script I'm sitting on right now and one I got to go back and finish. So uh, yeah. so we'll see. But yeah, there's I'm entertaining the idea. I have a lot of friends that are have been you know pretty great directors and, and we'll see. We'll see. All right. Yeah. Hey, when, when that one or when the book comes out, you got to come back. Yeah, absolutely. We got to talk yeah. some more. That sounds that sounds awesome. So, so yeah. before I let you go, is there is there anything else that you've got upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for? I know we've got uh, we've got River Road, but anything else? Um, not that I can like. Things are. I'll 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 say this. I'll say this. I've been. I th I think right now, honestly. Um. All I, all I can say is this right now, honestly, I'm doing some of the best reads of my life yeah. um, in the most healthy place I think I've ever been. And as, as soon as, as soon as I'll tell you what, as soon as I can talk about something, I'll email you. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. And I understand that. Yeah. You, you got to, uh, you got to wait till you're allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome though. Okay. Last thing, uh, before you go, where can we find you on social media? For the most part, it's uh, Stephen5435 on Instagram. Yeah, I found um, you there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, you know, that's the thing I kind of check in with. I'm not a huge Facebook guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and it's Mr. Mr. Stephen Roberts on Twitter. Oh, very um, good. Yeah, very yeah, good. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, that, Stephen, this has been terrific. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me ask you something before I go. Yeah. How do you feel about a podcast for podcasters 
I love that idea. Do you love that Actually, idea? I, I've I've dabbled in a little bit of uh, okay. uh, of that uh, a while back. Like out there. Is there like something like that out there? Not that I know of. Okay. You know, we we talked like I've got I've got friends across the country that podcast, and we've had those discussions. You know, mm. kind of doing something like that, and just never. You know, we got close a couple times, and just it just kind of fell apart. We never uh, never did, but I think it's a terrific okay. idea. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. Are you interested in that? Yeah, I was. You know, I love them. I love them. There, it's like storytelling in its most purest yeah. form. It is. I don't. You know, I. I'm a huge. I love Joe Rogan. I love yeah. like uh, Russell Brand as well. Yeah, um, yeah. There's so many, so many good podcasts available. Like, um, it, and I, 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 you know, just getting to know people. Just yeah. Getting, oh, it's terrific for that. I mean, it's it's a great. Uh, especially in the last year and a half it's a great way to meet people it's a great way to network you know make connections it's yeah I bet. I bet. there's a yeah, yeah. The, the downside is there's a billion podcasts out there so, oh, so getting yourself yeah. noticed that's the hard part mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but if you don't exactly. worry too much about it it's exactly. pretty awesome <laughs> you know you just kind of yeah. just do it for the for the fun of it and then it takes the stress yeah. away and then, you know, you just let the chips kind of fall where they may, you know, you work at it. If it works out great. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Keep me updated on that. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hold on one second. It's, uh, it's All right. So that uh, was the absolutely terrific Stephen Roberts. I, what, what a story he has and, I can't wait for you to see him in uh, in River Road. So the the trail look up the trailer because he's so good in it. Just that little bit you get there, you can tell it's, it's going to be amazing. And he's he's such a talented actor. You know, I, I think everything I've seen him in, uh, he's definitely been a highlight. Uh, it just just so good. I think he conveys a lot, uh, even without saying it. You know, it's just he's got that very expressive uh, face and, and just really talented. I can't wait for the uh, the memoir to come out. I think that'll be just a, a terrific read. I, I just I, I know we're going to see so much more from him. Just a, just a really talented guy. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in again this week. Um, don't take that for granted. Just just really appreciative uh, of the fact that you uh, find us each week. You know, if you haven't done so already, you can go to YouTube under MeisterCon Pod and uh, find us uh, there. Appreciate it if you would uh, like and subscribe. That would help us out. You can also go to our website, MeisterCon.com. You know, we've got, we're closing in on 300 episodes, uh, audio and video. So you can find all of those there. Uh, you can find um, any conventions, anything that we're working will be on there. And then Brett uh, has just an absolutely incredible geeky blog. It's it's just, he's such a talented writer. I know you'll enjoy that. So, so definitely check that out. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to Steven. Until next time. Bye everybody.